Rizzer, uh, tipping the Munster final this weekend against Limerick. What are your first thoughts about this game? Like Tip won a couple of weeks ago, different ball game now with Limerick starting a full team. Yeah, well, it's a massive prize, first of all, and the winners get to the Ireland semi final. People are saying Limerick were only shadow boxing there uh, last week. I don't think they were, I think they'll try to see what they had on the bench. Um, Liam went full belt to win the game. It'll be interesting down in Limerick now, a full house. People are saying, the people on the street are saying Limerick, they're fancying Limerick, the two were even money in the bookies. I still fancy Tip. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Do you think in a way that Tip, by putting out close enough to a full team, I know Jake Morris got his start, yeah. but Tip, by putting out the full team, getting the injuries, the likes of Bonner playing a fourth match in a short space of time for a guy who's a lot of miles on the clock, did, you know, are, are Limerick now coming into this full team out again, and Tip are in a worse position than they were a few weeks ago? Yeah, he's probably the one player shit he would have risked it was Bomber and he's a player you can't uh, you can't get another Bomber like but Dan McCormick is probably the next lad would start at Bomber or Dan is similar type player to Bomber and Flynn now would probably come in for Cottle Barrett but you'd have to favour Limerick yeah. the rest of their three good players Keane Lynch and Gary McKay were the reason they would be around Lighting Glass or Playmaker and score up front so you'd have to fancy Limerick in that sense but Fancy tip, yeah. yeah, so where can tip target? Because the last day, three little forwards got involved, nice few of them got a few scores. Yeah. It was a very controlled performance, it wasn't like yeah. somebody went to town or anything like yeah. that. Where do you think tip have a well, target now? Yeah, Limerick? but we got a lot of turnovers. I think the statistics were tw 21 turnovers. I think we could have got 16 in the Limerick backline. Limerick all last year were playing out in the backline, passing it out, trying to pick up Lynch, and Lynch then was giving the perfect ball to the far line. They'll try to do that again. That's the, what they do, but they'll have to remember Keane Lynch, Graham Mulcahy, and Aaron Gillane. Now, what they're going to do, I don't know. Alan Finn is going to probably start corner back. If I was Liam Sheedy, well, I'm not Liam Sheedy, but if I was tip manager, Gillane gave enough enough for the last time. I'd be putting Brendan Mayer back in Gillane. Now, that's a big call, say, putting Brendan in the full back line, but if you're able for Tony Kelly, I think you're able for anyone. I'd be putting Brendan in corner for full back or on Gillane, but obviously it's probably looks like Finn or Sean O'Brien. We'll go on him. But Galen obviously the man to man are Kaiting Gala and Graham McKay and Keen Lynch is there. He makes Limit tick. He's the playmaker and he was their best player last year, hurler of the year. And he didn't point to prove he won't be happy that he got trapped. So I think they're the three lads. Now I'd let Norman McGrath hurl his own game midfield because he's the best midfielder in Ireland at the moment, he's the playmaker. And I put uh, Breen and Keen Lynch. Because Breen was very effective against, he shot uh, Colin Galvin out of the yeah, clear game, he, was, yeah. he shot Jamie Barron out, no, and Watford were a disaster in that yeah, game anyway, yeah. but he still, he was pressing forward on the guy who likes to play maybe. Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. So he's the guy for Keane Lynch. I think so, yeah. yeah. I let Noel hurt his game. He's mm -hmm. getting Grode, uh, Grode Hegarty has been very impressive this year, rested the last yeah. day. Shane Dowling is a completely different type of player. He's so, yeah, yeah, so that's a different challenge for Tipperary this week. Hegarty was their best player in the last the previous two games. Big, strong lad. He doesn't look to be going that fast, but he actually covers ground quicker than you think. He's going to be going in and have a row in the park and try to win the area battle, I think, anyway. Mm. But we have the best, the mayor half back line, as they call it at the moment, the best half back line in Ireland. And that's what they're, they're going to target. What about the Tipperary forwards that are there? Do you think, like, Callum, John McGrath, uh, Jason Ford, can they all operate to the same level without an enforcer like Bonner there? I, I, I don't know. They're. they're I go on to tip now a long time watching tip match. I haven't seen tip forwards move, hurl, pass, take scores like this team. They're gone up way a level from 16, 2016. They're a joy to watch. Sideline cuts is like a normal thing now. Passes around it. They're not selfish. And what, like Limerick, if you go and say to yourself, right, who are we going to menmark here? You're actually we try menmark. The opposition have to menmark four or five forwards. So hopefully Dan will do what Dan does and um, and the boys do the scoring. Mm. De Declan Hammond's been very important as well. Yes. Would you rather someone who's going to stand off him, like for example Bubbles or Jason Ford, stand off him and get a few scores, or someone like Dan McCormick to go in there and physically get stuck into him? Well, Bubbles is brilliant to centre forward. He 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 won't stay on the centre back. He'll move around and he get three points or two points or six scores. Now Hannon's going to poke a lot of ball if he's free. I put Dan on him and give Bubbles the free road and move moving around. Mm. What's the difference between players like Cottle Barrett last year and the likes of Bonner up until his injury this year? And, and, and Bubbles as well, because you know Barrett has been used in midfield at times, his form wasn't yeah. great, Bubbles was dropped, uh, even Noel McGrath was dropped yeah. for the last game against Clare. So what's been the difference? I, I tell you, Michael Ryan got to the summit in 2016, right? 
unbelievable against Kilkenny. Uh, best performance all year was against Kilkenny. 17, we were competing in the semi final by a stroke of genius, Joe Cannon, in the right semi final. Last year, things probably went a bit stale. Now, his selection was a bit wild at times. He had Willie Connors midfield, Billy midfield. I think he, he Breen didn't start against Limerick last year. Cotton was going on midfield. The team wasn't in the, they weren't in the right spot. Then Noel wasn't started, Shamey didn't start, and Brendan didn't start against Limerick, right? Said that. So his selection was a bit erratic at times. So he's gone. Liam came in, freshened things up. Brian, the backroom team, but Liam hasn't eaten out of Pamby's hand. It's like if he energised her when he took out the, the old batter, put a new batter, or goes around the place, like, do you know what I'm saying? And he hasn't been in the right positions. Mm. If you see the team now, solid all around, Cottle back, best cornerback in Ireland, buys wing back, Barry back to playing well, full back. He hasn't been in the right position positions, and he's getting the best of it. He's like a psychologist, really, isn't he? Like, he's, mm. he's, I'd say he hasn't half brainwashed the way to hurt him. And he's given the forwards. Uh, License to run around everywhere. And do you, do you see, like, people, like, Tipperary is terrible for rumours, you know, when things are going bad, bad you hear all sorts about players yeah. are doing this, that, and the other. What, like, and, and like we've mentioned some of the players there, where they're night and day last year compared to this year as well. Yeah. Like, is it a case that that's generally nonsense spoken about Tipperary players? Because, you know, you're yeah, the Tipperary captain, you know, yeah. it's like. Well, 90% of the talk down around the towns of any Tipperary is all hurling, we're running, so rumours generate like that. There was rumours back in 16 that those players going off with different girlfriends and it's all a crap. Um, the Tibber are nine points better team now than they were last year. So the attitude is way better. The body language on the field when you look out on the field is way better. And players are fitter. Bubbles looks fitter, Cottle, no one regret it. I mean, you have a fit body, you have a fit mind, I think, mm. but attitude is spot on. And you can see it in the body language and that goes down to the factor again. Mm. So it's all the attitude and fit and just doing the right thing like. And you know the likes of Ronan and Paddy Mara from the club very well. well yeah. Do you see a difference in them in any ways, mentally, physically, anything? Well, I think Paddy actually looks a bit thinner this year, you know, so he looks leaner. Yeah, he looks leaner and he's fitter. And I haven't seen the boys since Christmas, you know. It's just they're buying into what Sheedy's doing with him, like, you know. So, so they're not going out socially? No, no, they're them. not. And they're, they're just buying into the whole lot. And I tell you a good one. I was up in the plough match last year and I met no one or Brendan Mayer. Brendan was working with Brook Sports and he came over to us. He came over to, I was with the Lark Harbour stand and he came over and he was smiling coming towards us. It was just as been announced that day that Sheedy was the new manager and leaving the body language and Noel and the smile, he couldn't keep it off his face. You'd know, you'd see that they were delighted that he was back and you're, you're kind of winning from day one, then, like. Mm. And you kind of mentioned that he's a bit like a psychologist or I presume that's from what you're hearing more yeah. so first hand, like I'm not sure how well do you know him. Well, I was involved in, I played with Tiffany in 2003, he was selected with Mikey Dyer. Mm. And no disrespect to Mikey Dyer, he was the manager. He did a lot of training, a lot of talks beforehand, and half time speech, he was top notch. I knew then he was going to be manager at Tiffany. Mm. And I'd say Liam was only in his late 30s then, I'd say. So that was one of his big jobs. I think he got the minor job afterwards, but he was brilliant back then, and, and he's brilliant now. The players love him. Like. And is, it, is, it, is there a man management element to him as well? Because you hear from different players that. He, he comes up, he does talk to you yeah. about your game, just yeah. how you were getting on in life in general. Yeah. Do you remember anything like yeah. that? He did, he'd always say, you're going, you're fine, you're going well, you're going well. But even like, say, Bubbles there this year, I can bet you at the start of the year, I'm only having a bit now, mm. he put his arm on Bubbles, Bubbles, you're our best player, we need you, we need to get you fit. Now when you select a player, he actually feels better in himself straight away, and get the players on your side straight away, then, then you'll, you'll, you'll roll on the air, like, mm. won't you? Mm. Do you have any memories of playing against Limerick yourself? Yeah, I came on as a sub there in 2005 inside in Torres uh, and scored a goal. And it was, it was some feeling to score a goal and you're only living across the road here, you know what? Grandfather was at the match, the family were at the match. It was a dream come true. It was a draw the same day. We went down to Limerick and played the replay of Lone Limerick and Evan Sweeney came on and scored a winning goal. I don't you remember that, I went extra time. Yeah, it was brilliant. And do you think the rivalry at Limerick it has been strong over the years? Like there was a number of years where Tip were yeah. beating Limerick well. During the 90s, yeah. so probably games that went both ways. But there's always local rivalry there. You think about Cap White, Doom, Newport, all on the border. No, it's good rivalry. And that brings a life of its own. You, with bad times, even like, yeah. go back to 71, which you've been as done as here. We don't remember that, but <laughs> the Owlheads in the town, I tell you, it was a wide ball. I think Joe McKenna scored three goals against Tip another time, and we ended up drawing the match. All them things bring a life of their own. I was at the 96 final below Limerick. It was a draw and they basically replay, remember that? Was that the one where they were 11 points up yeah, and then yeah, came back to yeah, draw? Yeah, was exactly that that? two matches. 
and sure then the three games in 07 were brilliant as well now some of them teams weren't great mm. but it brings the life of the self that they had the rivalry day. and Limerick supporters are, are, are decent and tips worse are decent so and w- w- this Sunday now the talk had been coming into the previous game that Limerick had a better panel and by resting some of their players in that game and Tip playing full strength and Tip not supposedly having a strong panel who's in Barrett and Bonner yeah. now it feels like it's, it's just worked out nicely for them and I possibly put them as favourites I put yeah. Limerick as favourites well Paddy Power has his money to vote we are the best team in Ireland at the moment if we won for the last four games whoever wins this game is going favourites are definitely favourites for the Ireland and into the semi-final I just think the way Tip are playing and the sheedy factor and he hasn't been playing tuned up right now I don't think Tip played extremely well against Limerick they formed a lot of balls the referee didn't suit our game either because he was happy on the whistle and it was a, st- a stop start game like it wasn't we weren't free from like well, normal times so I'd still go with Tip and do you think like Limerick wrestling players against the Tipperary team that's probably on the top of the ground did you see that in any way as a bit arrogant as a bit of an insult or were you just like that's that's your choice, fair enough. No, I, I think he wanted to know what he had on the bench. I yeah. think he went now people say he tried to pull the wool over his eyes and such such. He didn't want to leave the team not to win. Mm. He wanted to go out and win. But psychologically psychology when the three good lads were dropped, the players know then and then there's you're not it's not a knockout championship match. He probably lost the wrestling when he dropped the three guys mm. mentally, I think. As in just for that game. Yeah, just for that game. Over I didn't even say a word he told him about win, but unspoken. He probably lost the rest of Keane Lynch was the third man he brought yeah, on as well. Yeah. That, that said to me that he didn't want to particularly win. Yeah. He didn't mind too much yeah. if he won or lost that yeah. game. But Han- Limerick... Han- Han- was injured though, genuinely. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah. But um, that's two, two games Limerick have lost already this yeah. year. If they lose a third, as brilliant and all as they've looked at times this year and last year, surely that's got to seep into you mentally. Mentally, yeah. And the powers of be of the headquarters or the GA don't want to see Limerick get in another game and then go on and win around the three never heard about it mm, no so they don't want that but mentally they're up to getting bit twice tip bit him again i i i fancy tip big time the weekend mm. and who do you think is going to be the star man for tip this weekend like callan scored four goals in four games and parik marijuana man yeah <laughs> 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 Sorry, i'd always go for you but i think parik marijuana is hurling on real i know shame he did the rest parik to me was man of the match stop three lads coming in on the inline there one stage two points but um i need a forward like bubbles to me would bring the last day as well to where the money caught real low he was involved in a lot of scores, only got a pint. But I think if Bubbles can go on to enough ball, you saw what he done in 2016 against Kilkenny in the final. If he gets on to enough ball, he's like Messi, he can make things happen and he'd be the man for me. Like I backed him the first time to get mad at the match at uh, 21, I got found up like <laughs> so, <laughs> But uh, I think look our forward line are unbelievable to watch there. Joy to watch Shane Bowman, Noel, John McRae going around there with pints. We just we are a great team to watch, but we might get our own way all the time in the mm-hmm. foreline, I mean, but at the moment we're fine with that. One, one word of caution then, back in 2009, Tipperary had the, or sorry, 2008 Tip won Munster and Sheedy's first year, yeah. that kind of non-performance in the semi-final against Waterford. Yeah. 2009, there was, um, I think, a league game hammered by Kilkenny. 2010, getting hammered by Cork. Like he, he has definitely proven himself as an excellent manager, but no matter who's in charge, Tip are capable of producing flat performances on days. Yeah. Any worry of that? Well, there is because it's a long championship, and as one Kelly said at the start it's very unlikely a team will go unbeaten the whole year when they are around. Please God, we don't uh, we don't uh, get hammered or get bit, but I just think it's a something different about this, this, this team, the way she did going for one about things. They're mentally all tuned in well, and if they get bit, it'll be the, a team fair play to the end of the day. But it won't be for lack of effort or lack of organisation on the sideline. You see Ian Moshe doing the water, like Tommy up and down the sideline. Gary Egan there, cool and click, and they're combining there, whatever he's doing. So I think every there's not one thing you could uh, fall tip in. Like last year, there was a bit of bickering in the dressing room with players, things weren't going right, there was rumours. There's not a thing being said wrong this year, everything is top notch. And if they get bit, it'll be a fair team that bit. One final question at the start of the year, when you heard Tommy Dunn's coming on board, we knew Dara Egan yeah. was on board, then Eamon O'Shea was added. There seemed to be this word going around, especially when Tipper losing games, that too many cooks spoil up the broth. Yeah. Whereas now it's after winning a few games, yeah. they've assembled an unbelievable backroom yeah. team there. Do you think having so many big names like that works? Definitely. And I said it over there, but I saw Owen Kelly is in there now. Now to me, Owen Kelly, I, I was involved with Owen Kelly with Sarah's for a while and I played with him, would be the shrewdest man I'd ever talked to as regards forwards and a game plan. So he'd be the shrewdest now. He's in there. 
And you have the like, likes of Bubbles and Owen McGrath and Jamie and the boys. They're a hero when they were growing up, young and seeing the ball for his own Kelly. Mm. So when you're walking into a dressing room, you see your hero. Well, they ended up playing with the Mavs team, but he's a hero of theirs and he'd be shrewd with the forwards. Eamon O'Shea, I don't see, hear anyone saying bad about him when he was manager. And fair play, like to see, Tommy was doing the coach and yeah, Eamon O'Shea came in. Tommy didn't, they don't mean they all mm. stuck together. I know they could be giving out why, why, why is he here, like. So that brought the pan even closer together, like, and uh, I just think everything has been done right and that everything boils down to Sheedy the way he can get back with team together like that and he can get all the players even out of the his hand, which is a hard thing to do because you have 30 players there, you know, with 30 players that kind of like they, 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 they think they're inter county hurlers, it's hard to get brainwashed 30 players and he's doing it like.